Hey there, my sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I had a sweet little scrapbook to share today. We're making this with shape dies, so we're going to have a very uniquely shaped scrapbook. This makes it super fast to create, and since all those layers show at the same time, you can see all the details at once. It makes it look like you put way more work in it than you actually did. I'm going to use a spiral binder for the book I'm showing today, but if you don't have one, you can easily use rings instead as a simple substitution. So let's just flip through here real quick. You're going to have all of these sweet pages, and some of them are larger, so you can incorporate bigger pictures. And then we're going to use a printable as a flip here, and then you can include all of the details that go with your picture. So I think this would be a sweet little gift, especially if you make it for a birthday, and just fill it up with all your pictures and memories and gift it to someone special. Now, if that sounds good to you, then stick with me and we'll make it together. I'm working with the pink spring images printable from my shop as well as papers from my stash and so I just printed that whole sheet out and chose the ones that I wanted to work with and I'm also going to choose this nested arch shape die set to create the pages and so if you look through your stash I'll bet you'll find something that will work you really just want to have a set that has one side being straight so that you can bind it on that side and so I'm going to choose three different sizes of page and you could choose to make them all one size if you wanted but I really like that added extra detail that you're going to get when you see all those layers together so that's what I'm going to choose and this set I did pick up from Amazon on. It has the nested set, so you could use the larger one for your cardstock layer and have a nice border, and then the smaller one for your pattern paper. And so, for my book, I am going to wind up making four pages total, and so that would be one of the smaller and the medium, and two of the large. I went through my stash and found a couple of other shapes that were unique and I thought would be fun and work well. So this is kind of a pennant shape, sort of, and so it does have one solid side here, but also you could consider using it in this horizontal fashion as well, or maybe even bind it here and have that flip up. But if you do it this way, it kind of looks like a little house. So that might be something fun to explore. And then I also have one of these kind of a fishtail or dovetail banner shapes. And so that would be the same uh, for the ideas for the last one. But if you were to make this, I might consider having a back page that would extend to where the points are, just so that they aren't fragile from being exposed. So that would be something you would consider. And then the last one I pulled is just a coved edge rectangle that has the stitching detail. I don't have as many dies in this one and that's why I didn't choose this one so that I could make my cardstock borders. But if you wanted to go right to the pattern paper, this would probably be a great choice as well. And you could use it in either orientation and you would have a uniquely shaped and easy to make base and pages for your scrapbook. As I mentioned, we're going to have two of the size that's the largest for the back page, and I really want to have the very back page be a little bit more sturdy, and so I did cut two of the pink cardstock for this, and I just joined them together. And then I'm also going to add my pattern paper, and so I am just kind of alternating through the pages that I picked. I had my printable and I found the ones that I thought would coordinate nicely. And so I'm going to still cover both sides with my pattern paper that way. It'll have a nice finished look on the inside as well as the outside. And so I'm just getting these lined up and you can see how I'm getting that really pretty pink border all the way around. Now here comes the part where I did really have to sort of work through these details. And you can see that I do learn eventually, but I did not learn quickly. <laughs> and so my first try, I made a little sample and ran it through my bind it all. And you see, I did wind up cutting 
into that curve shape. So that wasn't going to work. And so I decided that I would like to have five holes and that would be enough spirals to support that binding. But look, I did not line it up very well on the bottom. And so I have just an odd little notch. And so I wound up putting some tape on this bind it all. Now this old girl is really on her last legs and I don't really anticipate her lasting too much longer but we're going to keep using her while she still works and so all I did was I put a piece of tape here and that would be my template or my stop to know where my pages would wind up and that way I could keep all of my spiral cuts at the right measurements so that they would all line up. So I would just go through here. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's quite loud. And also I have to pull that little block out that is keeping it from falling apart. Um, but while I just go through here, you see, and then line it up with the edge of my tape. And now I know that all of these layers are going to punch correctly and the holes will line up. So I'll just do that and then I'll be right back. I've got my holes punched on this back page now. And then remember I said that I wanted to do two that were the same size for the back, just so that I could have a couple of larger pages in here if I want to include some bigger pictures. And so as you can see, that back one isn't going to show, but as you put on your further layers working toward the front, you will be able to see all of those pretty patterns all at one time. So that's gonna add a lot of extra detail to the cover. I just love that. So now the next thing I need to do is bind this and I've pulled a spiral that's about a half an inch and this is just the right amount of space for a smaller scrapbook and you do want to cut the amount of spirals that you have. So I need five total to work in the amount of holes that I punched. So I'm counting five from the narrower end and I'll wind up with four on the wider side. And I just want to come in here and clip this with these and make sure that I get it pretty close there so that I don't have any sharp edges hanging off. That's pretty easy to cut. Now, the thing to remember about binding with a spiral is that you need to flip this around so that your back page is actually in the front because you want to capture this wider portion in the pages of the book. So let's flip that over and get this lined up so that we can run those spirals through and you'll get the little ones going into the punched holes and then you'll see this will be on the inside of the book. So I'm just going to go and press that in the Binda Dolls so that I can close up that spiral. So I've got that spiral squished and you can see that I have those extra bits on the inside. So let's flip that over and you can see that we have that nice clean spiral on the left. So the next thing I want to do is incorporate those printables and because I have a shaped page, it would probably be more difficult to add tip-ins. So I decided that I would add them on the pages here. And rather than having it come in from the side, I would just make a separate little page for it. And so that's what I've got here. Now I printed my images so that they would be three inches high. And so I knew that I could cut my strips of paper to be three inches high and that would work perfectly. I also used some stickles on the details and I know it never really shows up well on camera, but in real life, it really does make all those beautiful details pop. So I've got that paper that I plan to use and I did cut that to be three inches high. And just for the ease of getting the strips cut, I just cut these to be six inches wide. And I also came in with my scoreboard and I scored that at three inches. Now I want my pattern to be on the inside so it will show. And so I'm just going to crease that on the score line. And when we open it, we'll have that pattern paper on the inside and I recommend something that you couldn't write on. This would be plenty easy to see if you wrote and the lines will make it easier to keep that handwriting nice. But now what you wanna do is add your printable, your image. And so I'm just gonna line that up 
with the side. This is actually, to me, a whole lot easier than adding tip-ins, and it is going to bring the bulk into the book rather than having it on the side. So now we can just come in with a pair of scissors and clip off that excess right along the side of the image. And now we'll know that it will be a perfect fit. So the next thing you would wanna do is flip this over and add your double-sided tape as well as your tombow. So you're gonna get your two glue combo there and that's really because you want this to be well secured. So let's add that now. And then I'll flip this over because I think it will be easier to get this on straight. So you see I've got my two glues here and I'm just going to position that right along the page here. Press that in well to get a good contact. And now you have your little flip area and you didn't add it to the edge. And so I think this is going to be a great way to incorporate some extra space in this little scrapbook as well as give you room to put your journaling that goes along with your picture. So you could put your picture on this side and then work with the details on the other. And of course, I do have some additional ones prepared. So let's get those added. If you wanted to include more pages than what I'm showing, it would be very easy. You could just simply use a bigger spiral or put those rings in. You could even have room for some dimensional ephemera pieces or chipboard or some thickers if you wanted to work those in to your little album. So here is another page done. And then our last one will get the last of that printable. I'm so happy to use these scraps from my stash because they're smaller pages and I was able to get a lot of use out of them to cover the smaller area. So let's flip all of our pages back over and work on the cover. Now for this smallest page, I decided to clip that printable out along where that central detail is. I'll show you on this one. I'll show you that there is a little area on the inside with a border of this. And so I just fussy cut around that border so that I could reduce some of the background and that would leave me room for some additional details on a smaller page. Now the doily shape that I chose here is, it's just a little oval doily. It's the flower pleated nested oval die set from Gina Marie Designs. And I thought it worked well with the shape of the arch as well as the oval that would become my focal image. For there to be enough room on this folio, I'm going to have to position that quite high and to the left, just allowing enough of that pattern paper to show behind that so that you can see that whole beautiful doily. And I did add more stickles to this, of course. I added it to heavy cardstock, cut that back out, and then added my foam tabs so that we can build some dimension. I was also thinking as I'm working along how fun it would be to alternate the different shapes so that you would really come up with a whole lot of detail as you're working along. So you could have a rectangle in the back and then maybe a banner shape and then the arch or whatever you can find from your stash. I think that would be really fun and would look more like maybe a junk journal so that you could be working in all of those different shapes. So consider doing that as well. So let's just add our image. You see how well that fits into that oval shape and it still has all that beautiful detail. I created a one flower arrangement for this simply because we don't have enough room for more. And this was a magnolia from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I took off the top 
portion of this flower and switched out the stamens for something that I thought would coordinate a little bit better. I did still add the netting and the loopy twine bows. This is beautiful pink wrinkle ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And then to create those very small leaves, I used one of the nested set of Cinch and Go poinsettias that would create a poinsettia, but instead I cut it from green and then clipped it off in two leaf portions. I just bent them a little bit so that they would have some dimension and pop out, but that way I was able to incorporate the greenery as well and have it in a better scale for the size of this album. So we still wanna add that with our hot glue to make sure it's well secured. I think if you're printing pictures of maybe a little birthday party or making a little birthday scrapbook for someone, you would be able to incorporate the different sizes from, uh, for instance, the selfie printer. I have one of those and I can print larger images down into two by two. And so you could incorporate the size of picture that would work best for the page size. You know, of course I do wanna finish this off with a little cupcake charm just to stay on theme. So I'll add that with my hot glue on string. Clip the excess. And then top that cut string with a pretty little button. That is it, you guys. I think this was so fun to make, and I really believe it is versatile enough to work with any theme or any holiday. Just switch out the collection, maybe experiment with the different shapes of dyes so that you can come up with a unique combination that has your own personal style. So let's just flip through here real quickly to see the inside. You've got plenty of room for pictures and a nice place to add your journaling as well. And so I think this would mean a lot to someone if you made it for them as a gift. And so that is that. Now, if you enjoyed this project with a spiral binding let me know in the comments as long as that old girl is still working we could consider still using her and come up with some other projects that we can use with a spiral binding and that is it i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll have links for the printable and the dies and the trims in the description as well as for our socials as always i'm wishing you a happy and productive day I thank you so much for watching. Bye.